Hi great YouTubers, welcome back. In the field of industrial automation, communication between active and passive devices is the most critical task. In this video, I will share with you how I established PLC to PLC communication in TIA Porter between two 1500 PLCs using the puts get blocks. We will be using the PLC sim, no hardware needed. Let's get started. Kindly subscribe if you've not done that already and also press on the notification bell. This way, you'll always be notified whenever I upload new video. We will demonstrate this by creating a project. So on the interface, we create a project PLC to PLC sim. Okay, we select the right PLC program. And now we select a device, 1500 CPUs. And then we look for a CPU that supports industrial Ethernet. Okay, I click OK. Now we have our project created. I double click on the main block. And then we have the interface. I need to add another CPU to create a multi project. Okay, to do this, I click on the add new device. And then I go to the 1500 CPU and then select this type of CPU. Click OK, which supports industrial Ethernet. Okay, we have both. CPU is done. I double click on the device configuration. And now we need to do a bit of setup. I go to the IP and we see the IP is 1. I move to the system and memories and then activate this particular section. And then also move to the clock memory and then activate it as well. Okay, so we have all the clock, which is 0 0.4 being our one second clock. Okay, I move to protection and security and then connection mechanism and then I need to activate this to allow put get communication. Okay, we are done for the first PLC. We compile. Okay, compilation done. Now we need to configure the second PLC. I double click on the device configuration. We have the second POC. I go to properties and now activate the put get permission. That one is done. I move now to the IP and now need to set a different IP for this. I'll set it to an IP of two and we can see they are in the same subnet for both PLCs. This is all what you need to do at the second POC and now compile. Compilation done. Okay, in the first POC, I go to network and view. And now we need to establish the S7 connection. Okay. I go to connection and then drop this and then look for S7 connection. And then drag this to this section again. And then we have the S7 connection. I click on compile. Compilation done. And now double click or right click on it. Go to properties of the project. And then I need to activate this for simulation. I click active and then I click on OK. Now we need to create our DBs. So I go to the first PLC. Click on the add new block. Click on data block and then change this to send to PLC2 and click OK. I have my DB now. I need to structure it up. So send data1. I drag it through to have the remaining of the data. I have two booths. I have to change this to real. I need about four rails. But it depends on what you want to receive and then transmit. You structure your DB as such. Okay, and I change the last ones to integer. Okay, that is done. I right click, go to properties. 
and now activate this particular portion so that we'll be able to have the offset of the DB. So I click on compile and we can see that the offset is showing now. Great from 0 to 228. I copy it and then paste and then edit it for the receive DB. I go to general, change the DB description to receive from PLC2. I have to change the DB number from 1 to 2. I click on OK. And now we see the structure. I need to change the, the structure as well, the data. So it's receive. And then I drag it through so that I have the modified data in the data block compile and we have the offset also there right click copy it and I go to the second PLC and then paste them we have the two block of the same type in the second PLC I edit them quickly so send to PLC one and then the receive will be received from PLC one okay with that done I move to PLC2, open the simulator for PLC2, and then try and do a download into this particular PLC. I click on finish, and I'm done for PLC2. I now move into PLC1 and do my logical program. First, I open the simulator for it. I can download the hardware, so I search for the PLC. Now PLC identified with this IP, I click on load. Click on finish, and then we have the PLC one also loaded. So I have the two simulators all activated. Okay, so I go to the main block, so I can add my logics. Okay, I move to S7 communication drag the put block onto the network it's asking for an instant db i say okay okay we have our block and this is going to be our send data to plc2 okay we have our first input second input and then we have third and then fourth input as well we have the output i double click on this icon to open the properties window and now this is where you establish the S7 connection between this block. I scroll to this section, click on this drop menu, and then select the S7 connection. Click OK, and then wait for some time, and you can see that the S7 connection is established, which has worked correctly. I move to the block parameters, and now this is where you can enter your input. First, I put our clock that's one second clock here so that every one second we can send data to the remote PLC okay now we have our IP sorry our ID already established and now this is where we establish the point where we are going to send data to the remote PLC so if you come to this section you can see that you specify the area where the partner CPU is to be written to. So now I move to the second PLC and it is the receive DB. So I give the description of the receive DB here, which is db2.dbx0.0.byte and the total byte is 28. Okay, so I come back here and then specify the total byte, which is 28. Okay. And now this is where we are the DB within which we are going to fetch the information to send. And you can see the description right here, send area. And it says you should specify the area where we need to send. We will get our send data. So I go to the first PLC and it is the send DB. So I specify the send DB description here. I copy the first one and then paste. 
and now change because this one is db1 the size is still the same 28 remember the sizes has to be equal other than that it's not going to work okay and now they're done i will read it into memory word 2.0 the error i'll read it to memory word memory bit sorry 2.0 2.1 and then the status memory word 4 i now need to bring our get block okay i position it right here and now it creates an instant db i go to the properties once again and this is going to be our read data from plc2 okay I specify the same one second clock here and then we need to establish the S7 connection just as we did for the put block so I go to the connection point scroll down click on this drop menu and then select the S7 click OK wait for some time and we see the connection done and we can see the ID activated okay and now go to the block properties and this is where I can specify the inputs and outputs this time I will not type directly to the block I will use the section okay so I need to specify where I'm reading the data from the remote DB sorry remote PLC so I go to the second PLC and this is where is the send to PLC 1 db so it's db3 dot dbx 0 dot 0 the length is 28 and then the data type is all bytes okay okay and then this is where I have to read or store the data in the local PLC which is the local PLC and it's going to be the receive db so i give the receive db description here db2.0.028 and then the length or the type is bytes i give the description well again because the first one did not work you can see it's okay now now i send this to 2.2 .2 and this one which is the error to 2.3 and then the status to mw6 okay we can see all is done and remember the data size or the db size should be equal other than that is not going to work we now click on the compile we don't have any error in the compilation we click on download To download this into the first PLC load and then finish I go online click on OK and we can see the system is working I start the second PLC minimize them and now I open the DB that's the send DB to send a data and to see if I will receive it in the second PLC so I position this correctly move to the second PLC and then open the receive DB I go online here and then here as well okay so send to PLC 2 so I first send a boo true and we can see true registered here I send a rail of 20 and we can see 20 has been sent as well working perfectly okay we will now test our second POC sending data to the first POC I've already positioned them the second I sent 40 to the first POC and we can see it has been received I sent a boolean from the second POC to the first it's been received and then I send an integer from second POC to first it has been received working perfectly
Now let's try and add some logic to send the data from this section. So I add a clock memory 0 0.7 and then I send it to one of the bits within the send db. So I send it to db1 dot dbx 0 0.0 and then I save it and now I want to send a real data so I move to the move block I will send 16 and I will send it to that integer section which is 22 offset 22 so I specify db1 dot dbw22 because it's a word okay I can now compile and download load now loading is done okay I can now go online and then move to the second PLC I'm now online now I will now move to the second PLC everything is working fine here so I move to the second PLC receive DB and then confirm if I'm receiving this data there okay and then we can see that the true false true false is coming because we are receiving pulses and then we can see the 16 already there I will change it to 25 and reload the program again and we can see that it has changed to 25 as well working perfectly thank you all for watching see you in the next tutorial bye bye